Aaron. Oh, oh, hey, what's up, Katie? What are you? What are you? What are you oh, doing? Man, I'm getting ready for today. It's gonna be an active okay. oh, full that, day. That's I'm so, so great. excited. Like, but maybe Gosh. maybe we could go ahead and, and tell the kids what the theme of the day and the oh, day. right. And the coaches can do that later. That's right. Today our theme for the day is gonna be be disciplined to cooperate. What's our verse for today? Our verse for the day is found in 1 Corinthians 12, 14. For the body does not consist of one part, but of many. Yeah, so being disciplined to cooperate means you have to work together. You're not a one-man show. You can't just grab the ball and think you can win the game all no. by yourself. You need to learn how to cooperate with your teammates. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine that? Like a one-person like basketball team or like football and how boring would that be, That'd right? Be kind of it would be pretty boring. It's so much fun learning to work with other people and like you end up being like a family working with your teammates, yeah, right? Yeah, this is what it's all about yeah. living life. We have to learn how to work together. So what do we have going on today? Well, that's a great question. Today we're going to hear from two coaches and they're going to do a little demonstration. It's going to be awesome. You're going to have soccer first and then later on you're going to have cheer. Woo! Man, that's going to be awesome. It's so be guys, fun. get ready to yeah. move around a little bit. Oh, don't break anything and let's have some fun. Woo! Hey boys and girls, it's that time of year again. It's BBS time summer sports camp through the Freedom Center, but it's a little different because our world is a little different right now. So I'm really sorry we don't get to see you in person, but because of the internet and online and virtual, we can teach you soccer skills and you can take them and learn them at home and teach them to somebody else at your home, a friend, a cousin, whoever is in your home, okay? So I'm gonna show you some things with soccer. First of all, boys and girls, we don't use our hands, correct? Only the goalie, patero, that's your Spanish word for goalie. So it's a little bilingual here. You um, don't use your hands, you use only your feet, but it's important when you use your feet, boys and girls, that we use the right part of our feet. Um, so I'm gonna show you a couple of drills with um, dribbling. We dribble, we trap, and we pass, and we shoot. These are the four things that we do with our feet. But first I'm gonna show you how you stop the ball, how you trap it when somebody passes it to you. So I'm gonna, I have a handy daddy helper right here. I'm gonna show you how we can trap. Okay, so first of all, he's gonna pass me the ball, and you can stop it like that. You can do that way, that's good, but even better, I'm gonna show you the second one, is if you stop it like this. Just using the inside of your foot, it's right here, okay? Using the inside of your foot to stop it. And the reason that's better is because sometimes if the game is going really fast and somebody passes you the ball, and you go to trap it, it can go under your foot, and you don't stop it as good. So the second way is better. Look how I use the inside of my foot to pass to him. So one more time, he passes to me. Let me show you because when you pass, it's right here. Boys and girls, it's almost like a pendulum swinging like that. See how my leg is almost, looks like an H or an L. And I take my foot, I lock my ankle. See how it's locked? And that's how I get my power. The important thing too, did you see this foot? It's pointing at him. If I point it that way, the ball's gonna go over there. I need to point, this is my planning foot at my partner, so go ahead. And as I pass, there, see how I pass it right to him? It's nice and firm. That's just for a short pass, okay, pass it back. Then boys and girls, if you go, you want to either hit it hard or you're shooting the goal, we don't use our toe. This is bad, you could break your toe. So boys and girls, we want to use what's called the instep. It's right here. When I kick the ball, see how I push it like that with this part of my foot, go ahead. Okay, so again, it's right here, like that. And then when I go to, go ahead, pass it back. When I go to either have a lot of power, I go to step, I step right next to the ball, again, pointing where I wanna go, and I kick it with that part. And then I can get more power on the ball. And that's for when you're either going to shoot a goal or pass a far pass, not when somebody's right next to you. Okay, so boys and girls, when you're dribbling, it is a dribbling is when you keep the ball really close to you. You are not kicking it hard. They're just little baby, like if you were tapping like this. So I'm just keeping the ball close to me. I'm looking up, I'm not looking down, and I'm keeping it close to me as I go through the cones. Boys and girls, if you don't have cones at home, you can use cans of food, water bottles, make do with whatever you had. Okay, boys and girls, so to end this up, to finalize our lesson of soccer, 
We're going to ask you to do four things when you're at home to practice. I want to challenge you, and I want to challenge you to share it with somebody in your home. Um, then you can teach them, or just so you are accountable for what I've asked you to do. Make it fun, okay? So the first thing we had was we had um, dribbling. So you're going to practice dribbling. You're going to tra practice passing. You're going to practice trapping, and you're going to practice shooting with the inside of your foot. That's four things, okay? You can do it. You're great. And remember, take the shot, the soccer shot. Okay, boys and girls, so here we are in our coach's huddle. You notice I'm on the ground because I want to huddle, not hover over you. And our um, character trait, our focus for today is going to be cooperation. And boys and girls, I know you've learned about cooperation. If you go to school, your teacher teaches you how to get along with others and to cooperate. And um, I just want to thank God for um, the cooperative efforts that you make every day and in, in learning to get along with your family right now. And I want to think about where you might be able to cooperate with somebody. Let's say you have somebody in your house that wants something and you want it too, like that cool toy or that cool candy or whatever it is mom has. How we learn to cooperate is by letting that other person be more important than our feelings, by understanding them more than us wanting to be understood. So it might be okay to say, you know what? I'm just gonna let you have that candy bar today. And I promise good will come back to you. That's part of cooperating. Um, if you, um, when you go to school and the teacher may, you know, has you get along with others, that's part of cooperating too. Okay, so a Bible verse we can use, and it's actually from the International Children's Bible, and it's Romans 15, five and six. And it says, patience and encouragement come from God. And I pray that God will help you all agree with each other the way Christ Jesus wants us to. Then you will all be joined together in unity and you will give glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the cool thing is, boys and girls, when you cooperate, you're not only making yourself feel good, but you're, you're make, your mom and dad are going, wow, look at my child acting all cooperative, right? And then you also, the most important, we make God happy because boys and girls, we're all God's kids. Even the kids that make you really like upset, those are the hardest ones to cooperate with. But I challenge you boys and girls to um, just cooperate with somebody that's not so easy to cooperate with. And inside, you don't have to tell anybody, but inside you can give yourself like a, you know, good job, a kudos to yourself. Like I just like cooperated with that person. They really made me mad. I don't want to cooperate with them, but I did it anyways. So I just want to close in prayer. I have a cute little prayer for you. Okay. So if you bow your heads, close your eyes, Lord of all, as the God of love, you call us to live and work with others in unity. When Jesus prayed for all believers, he asked that we would be one as he and you are one. He asked that we would be brought to complete unity to let the world know you sent him and have loved everyone even as you love him. Your plan is that love you have for Jesus would be in us and that Jesus himself would live in us to show others what your love looks like. John 17, 20 to 26. Father God, your wisdom that comes from heaven is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits. It's impartial and sincere with an amazing recipe for living and caring for our community. Father God, help us today to care for our community like we never have before, Father God, so we can show your love so that others may want that love that they see in us. In Jesus' name, amen.
consist of one member but of many. I'm going to tell you guys a Bible story found in Ephesians that's going to help us understand what that means a little bit more. It's going to be found in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 15 through 16. Instead we will speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ who is the head of his body the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing full of love. This famous verse in Ephesians is describing the body of Christ or the church. And Paul is telling us about how every member is important and every member has a different role to play. So let's think about your body. What if one morning your hand woke up and was like, I want to be a foot today. What would that look like? You'd be walking around on three legs, maybe on four legs. And then how would you eat? A hand can't be a foot just the same way as a foot can't be a hand. They're both really important to your body, right? Without them, you wouldn't be able to do a lot of things. But when they're acting in their proper function, then your body is getting moving and that's how it works at its best, right? Okay, so think about it like in sports. If you were on a team and everyone was so good at shooting three-pointers and they were so good at scoring, but nobody was good at defense, would your team be any good? Yeah, I don't think so. You need a team that's gonna be able to shoot, defend, pass, assist. All these things need to come together to make one balanced team for victory, right? And in the same way, you can't be the only person on the team doing everything. If the whole team was riding on your back and it's you versus the whole other team, eventually you'll get tired and you're gonna need more people to help you out, right? It's easy to see how silly it would be to take on a whole team by yourself when you're playing sports, but what about in real life? What does that look like? The same goes with the body of Christ. Some people are really good at preaching, some people are really good at encouraging others and praying for people, some people are great at serving, some people are great at singing, not me. But that doesn't mean that just because you can't do all these other things that you're not important to the body of Christ, you're so important and you're so needed and then you just need to figure out where God wants you to operate when you're serving the body. Teamwork is all about using our own talents to serve the greater good and to encourage others to do the same. So how will you be encouraging others to use their skills and talents today? He's the one who hung the stars One by one 
Hey, cheerleaders, it's Coach Linda, and I'm so excited because today we're going to learn the Jesus cheer. Are you ready? I'm ready, okay? But first, you know what we have to do? Good cheerleaders always stretch. It is so important. So let's spread feet apart, stretch, stretch that thigh muscle. Good, good job. Cool, good, good. Now go to the left side. Stretch it out, stretch it out. Do you feel the pull? Feel the burn? Good job. Now go in the middle. Go as far as you can go. Give your knees just a little bent. Good job. Push down as far as you can go. Awesome, good job. Stretch to the left. Stretch to the right. Awesome, awesome, good job. You feel the burn a little bit? We needed that, didn't we? Awesome, good job. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you the Jesus cheer, and then we're gonna learn two jumps. Are you ready? Okay, the Jesus cheer is so simple, but it's awesome because we can cheer for Jesus every day, right? And we're supposed to be his cheerleaders. So we're gonna start in starting position. Take your arms, feet together. Good job, okay? So I'm gonna show you the Jesus cheer first, and then we'll break it down. Here we go. Ready, J, E, S, U, S. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Good job, awesome, awesome. Okay, this is our starting position. So we're gonna start and we're gonna go J, E. Hands are parallel, good job. Your right foot is out. Now we're gonna do a T, S, U. Now go straight down, S. Here's the fun part. We're gonna take our right foot and step out with hands in a V. Jesus, Jesus. And here's the fun part. We're gonna do a spread eagle jump. Feet come back together, hands down. You're going to fan your arms and spread your legs at the same time. Your feet are bent. Here we go. Jesus, whoops, good job. Okay, are you ready to do it with me? Let's do it from the beginning. Here we go. J, E, S, U, S. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Awesome, good job. Okay, cheerleaders, are you ready? We're gonna do it one more time. Here we go, starting position. Ready, J, E, S, U, S. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yay! Awesome, great job. Hey campers, it's Coach Linda, and today I want to talk to you about the discipline of cooperation. You know, cooperation is simply the ability to get along with others in order to get something done, in order to accomplish something, right? And in this world, if you don't have cooperation, you will get very little done because bottom line, we need each other, right? So we have to use and learn this discipline of cooperation. It made me think about my girls when they were about your age. I have three of them, Jenna, Katie, and Kara, and they loved, loved working on jigsaw puzzles. How many of you like to work on jigsaw puzzles? I bet so. They love working on jigsaw puzzles. And I remember they really learned how to cooperate to complete the puzzle, which was the end goal, right? And the first thing that I noticed was that my girls learned to recognize each other's gifts 
because we all have gifts, we all have talents, right? And I remember Katie was so good at the edge pieces. That was her job. She worked so focused on those edge pieces and no one else touched them. But Kara, on the other hand, she'd take one little part, like an eye or a heart, and she would focus for hours on that one little part until she got it done. Second, what I noticed about my girls, after they recognized their own gifts and abilities, they took ownership of their part. They said, hey, this is my responsibility. I'll take care of the heart. I'll take care of the edges. And then they were faithful to be responsible. I love that, that was so cool. The third thing that I saw about my girls is they learned to be respectful. If you're not respectful, you're full of pride, right? But when you're respectful, you say, hey, I'm gonna stay in my lane, I'm gonna do my part, and I'm gonna let you do your part. Jenna would have never gone over to Katie's edges and messed them up. Because why? She would have been sabotaging her own success. She knew to stay in her lane. And last, what I loved is they would celebrate the little victories that they all had. When Kira completed her little heart, Jenna and, and, and Katie were her cheerleaders. They'd go, Kira did it! Yeah, 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 yeah! I loved it. We gotta celebrate the little victories along the way not just waiting for the end process to be completed. Celebrating those little victories are so important and show that spirit of appreciation that is with so huge on that discipline of cooperation. And it made me think about a very important scripture that applies to the body of Christ in this discipline of cooperation. Listen to this, it's 1 Corinthians 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. You see, we're all members of one body and our goal is to honor Christ. But guess what? We can't do it alone. You know, Pastor Greg and me, we need the body of Christ. We need Katie. We need Brandy. We need Aaron. We need you. Because each one of you have gifts and talents that we don't have. But we have to have that discipline of cooperation. Or guess what? We'll never get anything done, will we? But when we work together, we're a beautiful team. And we are truly one body. What up, everybody? We hope you have had a great second day here at FCC Sports Mania. Just a reminder, our verse for the day is found in 1 Corinthians 12, 14, where the body does not consist of one member, but of many. So I want you to practice that, memorize it, store it in your heart. Get it? Got it? Good. And be sure not to forget our theme for the day, and that means to be disciplined, to cooperate. You're not just a one-man team. You're not a one-man show. you got to learn how to cooperate with your entire team to accomplish that goal or score that touchdown that you need to get to. Mm -hmm. And be sure to share this video. Uh, like it. Subscribe to our channel. And uh, be sure to invite as many friends as you can so that we can have fun all together online at BBS Sports Mania. Later.